Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are gonna to continue with the cardiovascular system by focusing in on an important topic to understand qualitatively for the MCAT. This topic is known as the Starling forces, but you can think of them as the rules for determining how much fluid is in the blood and the surrounding tissue. There are four types of big processes that contribute to the overall push or pull of water in and out of a capillary. The first is capillary hydrostatic pressure, or PC, which is effectively just the blood pressure on the inner wall of the capillary. The second important force is the interstitial hydrostatic pressure, or PIF which is the pressure on the outer wall of the capillary. In a healthy system, this number is negative due to the sucking pressure of the lymphatic vacuum. Now, let's see what these two look like diagrammatically. So if you look over here, inside, this is our um, capillary, outside is our interstitial space where muscles or other cells exist. So if we look down at PC, which is the capillary hydrostatic pressure, we'll see that just the force of the blood pressure itself causes water to move across the cell wall into the interstitial space. Now, we also talked about the interstitial hydrostatic pressure, or PIF, which is right here. And this is a negative pressure, symbolized by the negative millimeters mercury here, caused by the sucking of the lymphatic vacuum shown in green. Now, this will eventually lead and dump back into the heart, but a big role of the lymphatic system is to clear this excess fluid from the interstitial space into the heart. And it can clear about three liters of water a day or of fluid a day, which is pretty significant. Now, the last two processes have to deal with proteins and osmosis. These are The first one is called the plasma colloid oncotic pressure, or pi C. This is caused by the presence of large proteins suspended in blood plasma. The large proteins cause water to move into the capillaries from the interstitial space, therefore increasing the blood volume. The opposite to this force is called the interstitial colloid osmotic pressure, or pi IF. Now, Pi IF is the osmotic pressure caused by the protein suspended in the interstitial fluid. The proteins here similarly cause water to move from the blood into the interstitial fluid. Again, on the diagram, the proteins are symbolized here in purple. And we see that Pi C or the plasma colloid oncotic pressure causes water to move back into the blood vessels whereas the interstitial colloid osmotic pressure, or PIF, results from proteins outside of the vessels, causing water to move out of the vessels to go be with the protein, to surround the protein. This is all osmosis, folks. So we have these four forces. What happens when they are out of balance? Well, if there is too much water moving out of the blood into the interstitial space, this can lead to something called edema if the lymphatic system becomes overwhelmed. Now, if not enough water is moving out of the capillaries, this could lead to hypertension or a increase in urination. Now, I know I just threw a lot of vocab words at you, but these vocab words are really not what you should be taking away from this video. The MCAT isn't going to ask you about plasma colloid osmotic pressure or capillary hydrostatic pressure, but they will test you on the underlying concepts. That's what you should focus on. Protein causes water to move towards it. High blood pressure causes water to leave the capillaries into the interstitial space. And the lymphatic system sucks water out of the interstitial space and causes more water to move from the blood into the interstitial space. Thank you for watching our video on the Starling Forces, and I will see you next time.